Hi guys, today we are checking. Hi guys, welcome back. Today we are checking Figma's 30 big updates that they have just introduced yesterday. In this video, I'm going to be capturing 10 to 15 of my favorite rather than capturing all 30. All right, so the first one is actually useful for us on Canvas Preview. So now whenever you hover over any of the lighting modes, so if you change from normal to hard light, earlier you had to click on these and it will then convert the style. However, now you just hover over them and it will show you a live preview of how that style or lighting effect will actually look like. So kudos to Figma for bringing this. The next one is a multi-select search. Now you can just search for any element on screen. You can select multiple instances or just multiple elements from that search list and then make grouped changes or collective changes. Super useful can make our processes a little more efficient and quicker. I love it. We all know of the pesky spacing on the top and bottom of any text layer. That would even cause issues with placement and alignment. Now there is an option in the type settings menu where you can remove the leading trims altogether. So that I think is super useful, specifically when you're creating titles or headers. Oh, this feature is finally here. Now you can create a list that starts from any number. Earlier, it always started from one and you could not manually change it. Now, manually change it to anything, five, six, 10, 100, Figma doesn't care. You, you are free to use lists as you wish. The next one is hanging punctuation. We all know that little punctuation mark or that quote mark, which would take an entire column in a text area. Now that pesky thing is gone again in the type settings, you can activate hanging punctuation, which means now your text can be aligned perfectly to other elements if the punctuation mark is there. Especially if you're working on larger projects, you don't want to manually shift things around. Search has now come to the new tab option on desktop. So whenever you create a new tab, you're asked to open an old file or create a new file. Now you also have a search bar where you can search for any of the files that you have. This can be really useful. Again, when you have larger projects or you have various different projects you're working on, can be faster to switch between them. This is something that we have on certain browsers, but Figma is bringing it to your desktop experience. Hover over any of the tabs on top and it will show you an actual visual preview of it. Not only the name, but also how the files look or if they have a thumbnail, it will show you that. Th the next one is exciting for Mac users. Since I'm a Mac user, I am excited about it. So if you have a MacBook or a trackpad, you'll be able to feel. So every time you give a reaction, a smiley face, a fire emoji inside FigJam, the actual trackpad is going to vibrate. So you're going to feel like you're giving a reaction, which can be a nice update. I wish something like this comes to Windows soon as well. Comments are finally getting the due diligence that they deserve. Now, whenever you're commenting on a design, or someone else is commenting on a design, they can create rich text, which means they can add links to a text. They can add bold, italic, underline, underline any text inside that comment itself. This is really good for people who are writing long comments. They might need to add a particular link to that comment, or they might want to highlight a part of the comment, which can be interesting. Comment, comment, whatever you want to call it. Preferred instances is a really nice update. You can set preferred instances on any component. So if you're often changing between icons in a component, you can always make certain icons as preferred and you can quickly switch between them. It's like, it's kind of like having a storage or a shortcut which you can quickly access rather than having to manually change things. Component nerds are going crazy for this right now. Earlier, anytime you were resizing an image, it would snap to other images or other components on screen. Now you can freely resize any image, whichever way or direction you like, just by holding control on your keyboard and you can quickly just resize and it will not snap to anything else. Oh, placement improvements is one big one. Now you can copy and paste certain properties of a layer rather than having to copy and paste the entire style of the layer. So if you copy an image from a certain layer to another layer, not change the properties of that other layer at all. It will just add the image. That's it. Something similar exists on tools like Webflow, but it's a welcome change on Figma. A lot of you guys use rules and rulers. Now you can just right click on these panels on the top or the left and you can switch them off quick rather than having to delete the rules or going into preferences and removing them. They have added a very unique UI 
to compare the previous instances of a design to the new one. Anytime a component is updated in the main library, you'll be able to see the changes sort of being made live with this little compare property. Now you know what has been changed without having to squint and see what's been changed. Now you can smoothly copy any SVG code into Figma and it will perfectly showcase that. So if you have a website where there are multiple SVGs, you want to copy those SVGs into Figma, this is a good way of doing it. This is not an important update, but this is a fun one. Fig Jam sticky note animation, I personally really liked it. They're adding these cool animations. Whenever you drag a new sticky note, it's as if you are dragging it out of a nice little animated layer which I really like. I think this is a good direction. Figma should implement more animations to make the whole experience a little more delightful and fun while you're using Figma. Oh, this is a big one, man. Sticky scrolling in prototyping. Now you can have sticky headers and sticky nav bars. You just select the component or the layer and from scroll behavior, you now have sticky. So now whenever you play it, it will stick to a certain section. So if it is a part of a group or a layer, it will only stick to that layer or group, which is really useful. This is actually a very interesting update. Now you can even have frames of things like the old Macintosh or old iPhones, etc. I'm loving the little cosmetic changes that they're bringing. Okay, finally they are doing this. Now if you have a prototype where there is an overlay, you can add background blur to an overlay quickly. Now you have a new option called mask. Every time you want to mask an element with a vector or an image, etc., you can now do that. You can quickly change between alpha, vector, or lighting. It can be useful to create unique styles of images, etc. Brings this nice Photoshop and Illustrator feature into Figma. Can be useful, especially if you were using Photoshop earlier. This next one was featured in a unique video where the person was quickly copying between iPad and desktop. You can now copy from iPad, put it onto desktop or vice versa. Using an iPad for things like FigJam, copy into your projects into Figma, which is open on desktop. Earlier, that is not something that was possible. You now have a new feature called tables in FigJam. Earlier, you had to create tables manually or use a plugin, etc. Now there is an official feature that allows you to add tables real quick, create custom tables. So these were some of my favorite little big updates. That is what they're calling it. Tell me which is your favorite in the comments. Also hit that like button that helps me create more videos for you guys every week. I'll see you next time. Same place, same time. Take care. God bless.